Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here, and today I'm continuing with the colour mixing theme. Um, today I'm going to be um, showing you um, one of the ways I mix my colours for a wet in wet wash. Today it's going to be for this misty forest scene, um, with the trees kind of disappearing into the mist in the distance. And of course, it's worth bearing in mind, of course, that this is just the way that I choose to do it. Um, however you wish to mix your paints, the colours you want to choose, um, it's completely up to you when you're painting um, similar sort of wet washes. So I'm hoping that you're, uh, by watching the way that I do it, it might just give you a few ideas as to the sort of strengths and values of paint mixes that I use. So um, the paints that I'm using today are from top, um, top left to right. I've got perylene green, sap green, raw sienna, um, lemon yellow, lavender, sepia, uh, indigo and Payne's grey. Um, but I'm not sure whether I'm going to use all of them. And so you can see that I'm mixing... Um, on the palette uh, with my mottler brush and painting wet into wet onto the paper that I just wet with the brush and I'm just trying to spread the paint around uh, without getting any kind of muddy um, sort of muddy mixes of paint uh, but I want to graduate this wash and blend the colours from top to bottom starting with indigo and Payne's grey and then introducing um, a nice light green which you've seen I've just mixed from um, a little bit of sap green a little bit of lemon yellow and I'm just joining those in and I've now added in some dark colours working quickly so that everything's blending wet and wet on the page. The darker colours are perylene green and um, sepia and now I'm going back to my uh, lighter greens which is sap green, a little bit of lemon yellow and introducing some of that here and there. So I'm using the same brush at the moment to get all my washes on um, initially onto the page and I'm painting really quickly. Um, I want to get everything on before the page dries. It's quite warm here today so it's going to dry quickly. So I'm working quickly with my Princeton Aqua Elite Synthetic Mottler brush. It's a large one and a half inch flat brush. You can use a Harky brush. Any wash brush will do as long as you're confident that it will give you a good range of marks and cover a large amount of paper nice and quickly. You can see that I'm dipping almost straight into the richer paint now, the drier paint. This means it'll stick onto the wet wash and start to give me some lovely dark deep shadows in my foreground. Swapping to the rigger brush, I can start to work on spreading some of that paint around with the tip of the rigger just to bring a little bit of texture into the painting. I'm dipping into sepia um, and Payne's grey and using the rigger brush and thin strokes upwards into the wet sky. And I'm going to just start to get a few tree trunks into the wash. They'll soften and diffuse, dry back nice and pale, but it'll begin to give me my layers of misty trees. I'm using Saunders Waterford um, cold pressed paper. It's 11 inches by 15 inches or about 28 by 38 centimeters. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape. I don't pre-stretch my paper, it's just paper is put straight onto the board. The board's at an angle of about 30 degrees today, so gravity is helping with the painting, but it's not running down the page uh, too fast. And of course, it's worth noting that my palette is at the same angle as my board, about 30 degrees. So you can see that my washes aren't too watery as the water is not running down um, the palette. Um, I'm using like really nice um, mixtures of paint, as I say, and not too much water. Because remember, when we paint wet in wet, there's water on the page already. So we don't need our washes to be too wet, otherwise everything will just run off the page. This is my palette knife and I'm scratching in some sticks and twigs and texture into the foreground in preparation for sprinkling the foreground with salt once I've allowed it to dry 
um, a little bit more because if you sprinkle salt into a very wet wash, the salt will just make really ugly um, cauliflower blooms and marks. If you wait until the paint is just damp, then you should get those pretty little flower and fern suggestions, little patterns where each drop, um, each grain rather, of salt just pushes away the damp paint just enough to create a pretty mark. So I'm hoping that my uh, paint is at the right stage for that as I sprinkle just a little bit of salt, not too much, here and there into the rich paint. Hopefully that will paint the foreground for me. So now I need to leave it to dry completely. So here it is, um, it's dried completely and notice two things. Firstly, the drying shift. Everything's dried back about 30% lighter than when I put it on, which is why it has to look quite a lot darker when you paint it on because of this drying shift. And secondly, I'm really pleased. I think I got the salt about right. Um, I have all these impressions of ferns, flowers, little weed, weeds and seed heads, um, leaves, that sort of thing, all painted for me. I just need now to sort of enhance the effect and paint in the misty trees. So the first thing I'm going to do, and um, as you can see, I'm, I've, I've sort of uh, zoomed in on the painting and I'm not showing my palette now because the mixing here is just more of the same. Um, I'm painting in some distant trees, um, wet onto dry, so they won't diffuse, they'll be nicely hard edged, but I'm using very um, light value paint and it's Payne's Grey with a little bit of sepia in it and I'm painting in my distant trees. I'm using a size 14 round brush, it's an Escoda Perla brush, it's got a good point, so it gives me nice thick tree trunk brush strokes. And then if I take the pressure off and um, change to the point of the brush, I can get some nice fine branches too. So you can see that I've put in those faint branches on the left. I'm now putting in some faint branches and trees on the right, uh, sort of building up so that it looks like I've got the forest just disappearing off into the mist in the background. Again, even though these are quite light washes of paint, as they dry, they'll dry back even lighter and just give me those really subtle effects. Then just a few um, hints of trees just in that light gap in the middle. And that just joins the forest together. But notice that I have kept it a little bit lighter in the sky over on the right hand side. Now I'm mixing up almost tube consistency paint, just a little water, and I'm working around my salt patterns and the dark paint that I put in in the first wash. Um, I'm going to be swapping between using sepia, indigo, Payne's grey, maybe some perylene green, uh, which is technically a black, even though it's called a green, it's a black pigment and one of my favourites. It's a really lovely colour for scenes like this. So I'll continue to build up the foreground and leave you with a little bit of music, um, Forest Lullaby by Asha Fulero.
And now that the forest floor is just about painted, I'm coming in with a couple of much darker foreground trees. These darker trees are painted with the Escoda Perla um, synthetic round brush, the size 14. Again, you can see how by taking the pressure off and, paint, um, and painting the twigs with the point and painting the trunk with the um, side or belly of the brush, we get this lovely variation in um, thickness of our brush stroke. This is sepia mixed with some indigo, um, which is giving me this lovely colour. And then I can use my palette knife. I can scrape through the paint and just pull through the hints of a few tiny branches and twigs just escaping from the trunk and the branches. I don't want to overcomplicate this. I want to keep these foreground trees nice and simple uh, because I want the whole effect to be quite sort of impressionistic. So once we peel the tape away and we're left with this clean white border and then against a nice white board, um, we can see that um, the painting's just about finished. You could add more trees, you could add more detail, you could even add some sort of stippled um, leaf effects and branches. But I quite like the way it's so simple and that the foreground trees are quite strong, but they don't detract from the delicacy of the distant trees that were painted in with very light value paint over the top of the wash. And by painting the dark values around the bottom and around some of the salt um, effects that we got, the forest floor um, is really effective and again, very impressionistic. So I hope you enjoyed um, watching me paint that and maybe have a go at something similar yourself. Remember that I've been um, painting in this sort of way for over five years now and 
if you find that your painting doesn't work out as you want it to, don't worry. It just takes a bit of time, a bit of practice and lots of trial and error. And it's the error that you'll find really important. So instead of being disappointed if the painting doesn't work out, then use that error to analyse it and try and work out whether you added your salt too soon so that it overwhelmed the painting. Whether you didn't use strong enough value paint in your wet wash so it looked bland. Um, all those sorts of things and more is all part and parcel of learning watercolour painting. Um, and it's the most important thing that you can do is um, just keep painting, um, keep making the mistakes and keep creating beautiful paintings too. And you'll find that the more you paint, the more you'll learn and the more you'll progress. So thank you so much for watching. Please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Um, and thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. If you want to support um, Morgana or I on Patreon, both our Patreon accounts are linked in the description below and we'd love to see you there. Take care and happy painting. Bye.